questions. I recognize the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Four Saskatchewan children have died in house fires on First Nations reserves in just the last six months. Aisha Rabbitskin, Solomon Ballantyne, Josiah Ballantyne, and Danasia Sewab. It's heartbreaking, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure all of our thoughts go out to these families experiencing such a huge loss. Fire damage is twice as bad on First Nations compared to off-reserve communities. And that's shocking enough, but what's absolutely outrageous is that First Nations are ten times more likely to die in a fire. I wrote to the Prime Minister last week because it's time for the federal government to stop neglecting its responsibility, to ensure proper fire prevention measures are in place, and that they also have the capability to properly fight fires and save lives. My question is for the Premier. If he hasn't raised this issue already with the Prime Minister, will he agree to send a letter to the Prime Minister today calling on action for action from the federal government? So Saskatchewan tops the list of Canadian provinces with the highest rate of women residing in shelters because of spousal abuse. And Saskatchewan is the only province in Canada to have more children than women living in shelters. There is no question that Saskatchewan needs a comprehensive poverty reduction strategy. The NDP would be very pleased to work with the government to help make this a reality. To the Minister, will this government agree to announce initial funding in next week's budget, then work together with the NDP in an all-party special committee to develop a comprehensive poverty reduction strategy? Sure. Residents in care, in care homes, deserve the best possible care, Mr. Sure. Speaker. And their friends and family members deserve the peace of mind the peace of mind to know that their loved ones are receiving great care. But the inspection records reveal that, many, that some care homes, Mr. Speaker, are not clean, are not sanitary, and are not safe. And this is what we've seen from this government. They claim they want urgent action, Mr. Speaker, but then it comes out in committee that, well, they actually didn't even need legislation in order to start posting the information. Last night, Minister says regulations weren't even ready, Mr. Speaker. A uh, different napkin story today from the Premier, but who knows? Um, they can't even identify in how many instances there are violations where seniors do not have a safe living conditions and a quality of care that they deserve. My question to the Premier, when will this government get serious about the regulation, about enforcement, about inspections for private care homes here in Saskatchewan? Here, here. Sheila Karen's father, Ron, has dementia. The reason given for why Sheila's dad has been rejected for long-term care is that he needs too much care and support. That's what Sheila has actually been told. There are not enough frontline workers in long-term care facilities to provide the kind of care that Sheila's dad needs. So the only place for Mr. Karen is in a psychiatric facility, and he has been there for months. Here's what Sheila says. Quote, there is a huge gap in this area of our health care. It's a very long, very frustrating road. They have so many patients they can't stop to offer any specific care to just one person. End quote. But Mr. Speaker, when that one person is your dad or your mom or your grandparents or your spouse, you need help. And you also need hope, Mr. Speaker. Sheila needs that today, and so does her dad, Ron. Leaders and residents of northern Saskatchewan are concerned about seniors' care in the north. The crop report of 2009 showed a serious shortage of long-term care beds for seniors, and the problem has only gotten worse. Seniors have done their part for this province, and it's time for the government to do its part. What part of 90% of teachers being upset in this province does that minister not understand? <laughs> the, uh, you know, that minister has failed to listen to educators across the, the province, and all they've done is ram forward with a simplistic agenda on top of uh, classrooms in this uh, province, tinkering around with uh, the school day, uh, bringing forward a, uh, a wrong-headed standardized testing agenda, and cutting educational assistance right. in classrooms across Shame. Saskatchewan. This isn't just a discussion about frustrated uh, educators in Saskatchewan. That would be concerning enough. This is about the quality of education for our kids. Teachers across Saskatchewan are committed to providing an excellent education for, uh, for students across our province. And they're doing a great job of this, despite the actions of that government. But what's clear in this study is that that government is undermining our education system, making it difficult for teachers to do their job. To the Education Minister, what will it take for this government to stop undermining our kids' education system, start listening to teachers, and start supporting their very important work? Everybody agrees that we need new schools. It's, the problem is, it's that government's plan that's the problem. We've heard concerns from parents, 
teachers, school boards, auditors, the Taxpayers Federation about the implications of that government's private P3 rent-a-school scheme. And we've heard concerns from the Saskatchewan construction industry, merit contractors, about the negative implications of a bundling process that will shut out local builders here in Saskatchewan who have done a great job of building our schools for decades. To the Minister, what will it take for the government to stop plowing ahead with its plan that will ship economic benefits far outside our province and result in the province renting costly private schools for decades to come. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So let's talk about this government's record on the environment. Slow walking the technology fund and carbon compliance payments. Watering down SAS Power's conservation target. Cutting environmental protection, environmental assessment, and climate change programs. Right. Saying it's a fallacy that we can increase our reliance on renewable power. Right. Slashing our province's emissions targets and actually presiding over a significant increase in emissions. Mr. Right. Speaker, that is not an environmental record to be proud of. We want him to stop cutting environmental programs. We want him to institute a serious conservation and renewables mandate for SAS Power. We want him to actually implement the technology fund. Mr. Speaker, Saskatchewan is resource producing, and Mr. Speaker, we're, trade, we're a trade dependent province, so it's vital that we're smart and diligent when it comes to environmental regulation and environmental protection. It's clear that farmers are doing their best to try and market their bumper crop, but they need this government's help to stand up against the powerful railway monopoly. The Fed's Friday announcement is far too little and far too late. The so called response won't force the railway companies to do anything that they aren't already planning to do this spring. And this is made worse, Mr. Speaker, by the pats on the back this government continues to give their federal cousins for essentially calling for the sun to rise in the morning. Why is this government defending a federal action that farmers themselves call too little, too late, and is effectively meaningless? The very specific question is that's, that's being dealt with in this debate is a serious matter. It's a serious matter about food being produced by our farmers that is supposed to go to the world. And we want to hear from that member, from the Minister of Agriculture and from the Premier, what it is that they're going to set forward on behalf of our producers. Mr. Speaker, it's not just on grain transportation that we've seen this government refuse to stand up to Jerry Ritz. They've done it on the community pastures too. Why has this reached the point that SARM delegates have to threaten legal action against this government with regard to community pastures? If this government follows the federal government's lead and hikes credit unions, credit unions taxes, it'll have a ripple effect across our provincial economy. And to the minister, will he commit today to protect the important role credit unions play within Saskatchewan and clearly commit to not hiking their taxes in next week's budget? And as we see a lessening of the fire responsibilities that the province has undertaken, we see a shift of them putting more responsibility and onus on the northern communities, the northern businesses, and the northern people, including the traditional people that have hunted and fished and trapped in those areas for years and years and years. When this government privatized the campsite booking system to an out-of-province company, it claimed to be, quote, moving Saskatchewan provincial parks into a leaner, more customer-focused model of service delivery, end quote. The government said, quote, Taking a lean approach as a first step paved the way for a simpler, more efficient reservation system, end quote. Well, Mr. Speaker, I don't know what the lean term for accurate billing of customers is, but that's not happening with this new system, and Saskatchewan campers are rightfully frustrated as a result. To the minister, will this government just admit that the privatized campsite reservation system is failing Saskatchewan campers, and will it commit today to fix the system? Saskatchewan students already pay the second highest tuition in the entire country, and now we know the tuition is going to go up yet again. Student tuition for an undergrad arts and science student at University of Saskatchewan has gone up by about 27 percent under this government. We've had right-wing governments before in this province that have, a, have made a mess of our province's finances, but we've never had a government in Saskatchewan's history that have failed an audit on their GRF books. History will show that that Premier and that Finance Minister have failed that audit, and certainly that's no honour. Let me be clear. For the official opposition and the people of Saskatchewan, nothing short of books they can trust will be acceptable in next week's provincial budget. Last week we heard, Mr. Speaker, how this government forced facilities to slash their urgent requests for, for desperately needed equipment, repairs and staff. 
This government, Mr. Speaker, says it doesn't have the money to fix the basics. Yet at the same time, they have $40 million to be spending on U.S. consultants to come to Saskatchewan and tell us how to fix our health care system. We are the province that invented Medicare. Surely we have the ingenuity to strengthen it and the ingenuity to improve it. We know that in just the last two years, the Ministry of Health, Mr. Speaker, has spent $3.6 million just to cover the travel costs of John Black and That's Associates. Correct. Just the last two years. My, for the $40 million that this government is spending on U.S. consultants, they could have hired 800 more care aides. Even for just the travel costs, costs they're spending on flying John Black and Associates around, Mr. Speaker, they could have hired 72 more care aides. And this is just a drop in the bucket. It doesn't include all of the other lean spending in other ministries, Mr. Speaker, on other contracts and through the health regions. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure there are good aspects to lean. But surely, Mr. Speaker, we could spend a few million dollars, buy the manual, train some people, and prevent this from becoming a cash cow for U.S. consultants. Mr. Speaker, to the Premier, how much money in total is this government spending on these consultants, and why isn't it putting that money into fixing the basics in health care, the basics in seniors' care? I recognize the Premier.